So at first I tried to uh, just use the cover that came with the control box that I got to make the uh, control panel cover there and drill holes and use a die grinder to cut out the squares and it was looking really junky and so and I was thinking wait a minute I, I have a CNC plasma table and uh, so I drew it up in via CAD and just cut it out of 20 gauge steel and drilled out the holes a little bit and put a coat of primer on it and I think this is going to work great now. So I had this uh, little duct panel from one of my salvaged ovens that happened to fit between the studs here so I'm using that to mount the thermocouple in the wall there and then screws are loose there but I'll tighten those down once I get the skins on. So then it goes through this little piece of conduit here into the uh, control box to be. So that's our that's our next project. We've got the uh, panel here and I've got these little mounting clips that came with the temperature and the timer controllers. So let's get these put in here so that we can mount those guys. So after the last one I decided it was easier to put the box through first and then slide the bracket on over and screw it into place. You can see they've got these little spring-loaded lever, lever arms that hold it tight against the, uh, the edge there so really the screws are almost just an added bonus there. Alright so here I've got the 220 lead coming in from the power cord. That's coming up here. The black lead, that hot lead is going onto this bus. And so then there's there's going to be a lead that comes off of this bus and goes to the relay over here. And then this hot lead goes to the heating element. So when that relay closes, um, it's going to connect uh, this this lead and this lead um, and then I've got the the other hot lead for 220 wire nutted together but be between the heating element and the power cord and then the the ground lead connected there so coming right along I've got the 120 positive and negative there also and it's all gonna get strapped to the box there the bare copper lead so here is the box as it stands now um, got the temperature controller up here got AC positive and negative going into 9 and 10 um, this is just what I described on the on the whiteboard earlier um, so so this is the positive lead, positive 12 volts is going through the timer to the relay here and, uh, and then back to the temperature controller. So once this gets a 12 volt signal, it closes the relay and it's going to uh, close the switch to turn on the, the heating elements. So if there's a temperature request and time, you get heat. So, and then I just have um, the wires hooked up to the fan and the light switch there also. So, hope that helps. So I realized I just did something stupid. I ohmed out uh, everything in the box there and, and uh, my, my uh, 120 volt circuit was uh, shorted out between the hot wire and the, the copper bonding here and I narrowed it down to one of the lights, one of the light fixtures here, and so I've been up on, this, on the ceiling taking this apart and uh, figured out that um, I did not have this bonding wire pushed down against the back of this, so when this, was, when this light fixture was hooked up to this can, the hot terminal was coming into contact with that bonding wire so it was shorting it out. So um, I, I'm taking this opportunity to rewire the lights and I'm gonna use the the heat resistant wiring for that because I figure this is 
coming straight off the oven. I probably should have done that to begin with, and I've got a bunch of extra. So I'm um, going to do that, put it back together, um, and then try it out again. Okay, so everything's wired up. I had to make a few changes. I did end up doing a 120 power switch. Uh, so I've got the, the uh, 120 power switch there, and then I got the lights and the fan. Temperature and timer. I decided not to go with a gang bar in the back or a bus. And I went all wire nuts. So, um... It's kind of a jumble, but you can see I've got the um, the neutral wire coming in and then pigtailed and then uh, it's kind of a series here between the neutral power supply for the temperature controller and the timer and same with the hot wire there. Um, so basically the uh, 120 comes in in the, the hot wire and goes to the uh, goes through the switches out to the lights and the fan um, the there's a, a line coming from the power switch that comes straight to the temperature controller so once the power switch is on the temperature and the timer are on um, and then uh, I don't know how well you can see here but the I, I soldered spade connectors onto the 8 gauge wire coming in from the 220, the hot wire, and um, and the hot lead going out to the heating elements. So um, that was the way I was able to get those to stick and be secure there. Um, kind of tough to get everything to um, bend in the right way once you get the panel in place. But uh, if I were doing this again, I would definitely do a slightly bigger box just to give myself more room uh, to work with and I'm gonna keep an eye on it and see how warm this box gets also um, I may put a fan in here if it seems like it's getting really hot in there but uh, so we'll keep an eye on that try to give you some different viewpoints here um, went with a low profile just the inline crimp connectors going to the switches here see the Thermocouple, the blue and the red there, that's the thermocouple coming in and going to the temperature controller. Okay, so when I turn the power on here, you see the, uh, the Inkbird time, temperature controller and timer kicks on, and this is the mode that it starts up in. So um, in order to change the temperature, you have these up and down arrows here, and you get a little flashing uh, cursor dot and then you can use the left arrow to move which digit you want to change. So if I wanted to change this to 22, I would go up arrow there. So you have the up and down arrow, and then you just change which digit you want to adjust. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, I didn't set up any of the alarm circuitry for that. I guess uh, looking at it now, it might be kind of cool to set up an alarm for when it got up to temperature. Um, so you could start keeping an eye on it, but um, I didn't do that. So um, so like right now, you can see that uh, the little out light is on. So if basically that light tells you when the relay is closed. So since the temperature is 8.7 degrees Celsius and I have it set for 32, um, it's going to say, yeah, turn the heating element on. So um, that's what that means. And then you can see the timer here. Uh, starts off in seconds mode and starts out with 99 seconds on it. So you want to change this to, uh, if you hold the mode button down, the MD button, you get the option uh, after three seconds, you get um, units. So you can change the units to minutes or hours. So I changed it to minutes there. And then you have a few other options here. You have up or down, then you have this this uh, node. And so when it's making this pattern, it, it does like an A uh, and then B, and then it, it recycles it. It keeps going back and forth between A and B. Uh, whereas if you change it to where it's going straight across, it's more like kind of what you would think of as your normal timer where you set a time and like I have it set up, I have the A circuit wired 
I don't have anything connected to B, so B is basically off the way I wired it. Um, so so now what this is saying is um, the way this would work if if I have it set up like this is um, it will A will be closed until the time is reached, and then it will go to B until I tell it to do something different, um, which is the way I want it right now. So um, so if I hold mode for three seconds again. I go back here and right now it's set for um, one minute and it's counting off the seconds there so once it gets to a minute it'll switch to B and the um, the relay will be open and, and there won't be any power being sent to the heating elements. I'm going to test out the lights in the fan here. So we've got lights, light switch works and there's the fan. Okay, so I've got the the 220 plugged in here, um, and I've got the timer and the temperature set up. So it's I'm um, just testing out the heating elements here. I've tried this before, but I just closed the box again. I just want to make sure everything's working. I can already feel from here that uh, there's heat coming out of them. The minute was up, and I just heard the relay click, and you can hear the buzz of the ovens when they're when they're getting power and I could hear the that it's it's off now so I think that's a good test